Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Phantom Sage Powers, where we discuss comic books, superheroes, a little of this, a little of that. We are in part eight of our Exit Swords review, and we're just going to jump right in. High above the Earth, we see the space station floating. It's called the Peak, 180 miles above the Earth. Here we find the Summers family. We got Gene, we got Scott, and we got Cable. Now, the last time we saw Cable, he was with Rachel Summers and they were trying to get some information out of Banshee's head and were saying that something felt weird. This is after he and Eunice the Untouchable went with Summoner into the external gate to clear a path for Apocalypse to go and see if his people were safe. Little did they know that this was all a ruse, this was all a trap. Banshee was severely injured. While Rachel and Cable were looking through his mind, they saw an image which was this large metallic strange sphere. So Cable took this information back to Cyclops and Gene, and Cyclops said that he has seen this before and he knows where it is. So they made their way to an AIM outpost, I believe it was, and they transported up to this facility that looks like it's been abandoned. And this strange orb is in here glowing and it's already giving me Event Horizon vibes. If you've ever seen that movie with Lawrence Fishburne and it's really, really creepy, check that movie out. Cable was able to activate this object, this engine with his sword, the Light of Galador. And Gene says, your sword did the trick, son. The power is stable and flowing to the rest of the station. He says, the first time I've ever stabbed anything back to life before. <laughs> Cyclops says, you know, maybe I should have asked what that sword could really do before now. He was just so happy he wasn't running around with the gun. Cable says, not to change the subject, but we're on a giant space station that I'm guessing holds thousands of people. So where is everyone? Jean says she's been wondering that herself. As they set off through this space station, Cyclops asks Jean if she is feeling anything. Cable says no. Cyclops says he was talking to the telepath in the family. Cable says, I'm a telepath. You don't practice enough, Cyclops says. Jean says, boys, please. As she's scanning, she says there's some sort of background interference or a distortion like an old radio that's stuck between stations. But yes, I'm picking up something. Cyclops says something or someone. Jean says she's not sure, but she'll let you know. Jean says this deck is a ring. You two go that way. Check the barracks and look in case I've missed anything or anyone. So they decide to split up and already I'm just like, really? Y'all are so, at least they got superpowers though, so. And sure enough, as Cyclops and Cable are walking these halls, they are noticing these weird black marks and stains on the wall and Cable comments that, do these look like people's shadows that are burned into the bulkhead? Cyclops says, whatever happened here, the agents of S.W.O.R.D. went down swinging. Just then, Cable gets another call from Magic. She says, I was serious before. There's a clock on this thing. We need you and your sword back to Kokoa now. Where are you? Cable says, we're on sword station and I can't leave right now. My sword is powering the place. Ileana says, it's a sword, not a spark plug. Get back here and be ready to swing it. Not everyone who got drafted into this tournament is a warrior. You are, and I need you here. Cyclops says, Gene and I are here with Nathan and we'll proceed home at the best pace. Magic says, of course, Captain. Cyclops tells Cable that I'd rather you not go. I just think you should give me the sword and let me do what I do. I don't think that's the way it works, Dad, but thanks. I'm being serious, Nathan says Cyclops. I know, Dad. Thanks. Cyclops notices one of the doors that's welded shut and welded pretty hastily. He proceeds to cleave it open with his optic blast while Cable uses TK to pry it the rest of the way open. Cyclops tells Cable that how are we better than humankind if we make our children do all the fighting? I'm already a warrior, says Cable, but stops when he opens the door all the way and says, what the hell is that? Cyclops contacts Gene saying, we found something in Science Lab 14 that you should see. Telepathically, Jean tells them that she'll be right over and to give her a moment because she's just discovered something herself. She opens the door and says, hello. There's a man that's staring out the window and he says, you turned it back on, didn't you? You powered the station back on. Why would you do that? Jean says, why wouldn't we do that? Where is everyone? The man does not turn around. He continues to stare out the window saying, at first there was just the sound of it, the rhythm of it, screams, and then silence over and over again, repeating, repeating in all of our heads. Half the station was dead before we could regroup. Half of them gone, like they never existed. They were the lucky ones. When he turns around, his eyes have been hollowed out. Something is carved in his head. Death would have been better, he says. And I told y'all, Event Horizon, see? Jean looks shocked. She says, who did this to you? Not who, what? They tore through our defenses. We were unprepared for enemies that are not bound by our laws of physics. 
After we retook the science lab, at great cost, we managed to deploy agents to the other side, but they never came back. I suspect it's a virus, but the people who could confirm that are all dead now. Do you have any idea what you've done? Show me, says Jean, and she probes his mind. He opens his eye. I don't know what's happening. That's one of the first things they taught us here. Resistance. How to train your mind so it's not a liability. But you should know what you've done. You should see the mark they leave. So take a look. Jean sees something horrible, feels something horrible, and she recoils. The man is still behind here. We see this action. He's inside of an airlock. And he says, and now you know. He goes and engages the airlock and says, we pledged our lives to defend this world. No one came for us. Jean screams for him to stop, but she's too late. And he's sucked out into the cold void of space. Scott, are you still in the science lab? Says Jean telepathically. Don't open any doors. Cyclops says, I definitely won't open any more doors. It murdered everyone on the station, Jean says, running towards her family. We know, says Cyclops. Did Saturn 9 know we'd find this? Cable asks. As we look back, we see a bunch of dead bodies on the ground, sword agents, and what appears to be some sort of gate and may have been made out of some kind of bodies or organic material of some sort. It looks pretty ominous. Cable asks, did Saturn 9 try to warn us about this? Cyclops says, I love your optimism, but ask yourself if there's some other motivation. He says, you think she wanted us to be killed? Cyclops says, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not out to get you. Gene comes in and says, it's real. I saw it in his head, but I didn't believe it. What's on the other side, asks Cable. A faceless death, says Gene, something called the Viscora. Just then, the gate is activated, and these beings start coming out saying, clean, dissect, learn, clean, dissect. Cyclops turns to Jean and says, how bad am I going to feel after? She says, it's a virus. The Viscora invade and replicate and move on. Great, says Cyclops. Cable, get your gun. The three of them turn and blast them. <laughs> I love this shot. Creatures that are coming in are being destroyed, but they don't seem pressed. They're not afraid. And they're saying something really odd that this reality is already fetid and corrupt and the detrius that feast upon this decaying dimension will be categorized and then cleansed. Only when death is uniform can our work begin to mine the truth of the past. Jean says, over my dead body. And she blasts them back into the gate. She says, we've got to kill the power to the station. Son, you've got to remove your sword from the igniter so we can deactivate the core. Cable says he's got it and runs off to get his sword, while Jean projects her consciousness into the gate, saying this might be our only chance to see where they come from. And as she enters the gate, she says, oh my God. And she sees thousands and thousands of these things, and it looks like some sort of skyscraper, but upside down, coming through this red black space not sure what's happening here but you can see the gate where she is and she pushes herself back back through to the space station gasping afraid and she tells scott do not hold back he says say less and he blasts him he's less loose blasting back through this gateway to stop these creatures from crossing through gene telepathically contacts cable saying your father was just mopping up here but we really need to kill that power now He's at the igniter and he says, I'm here. And he starts pulling it with his TK, trying to get his sword out. Gene is like, Nathan, I'm gonna need you to hurry up, boo. So he finally disengages the sword. The core is depowered. The space station goes dark and the gate closes. They avoided a catastrophe. And they say that they're proud of Cable. We jump ahead and see Cable coming back to Krakoa through the gate. He says, ladies and gentlemen, the light of Krakoa is here. And he stabs the sigil and it lights up. Magic says, you told me it had an outer space name. Don't rename your sword. That's lame. Doug, it's good to see you, man. I had no idea you were a swordsman, says Cable. I'm not, says Doug. Oh, says Cable. Magic is speaking telepathically with Cyclops saying, so is it just me or does it look like rain, Captain? Feels like it's going to come down like daggers, sir. You got a plan? He says, I've been noodling on some things, two main problems, communication and transportation. Magic thinks, well, I have some suggestions for rides, but communication is not my strong suit. Doug does not know what's going on. He says, uh, hi. 
They continue to speak telepathically. Other world is locked down telepathically, says Jean, but I think we could punch our way through if we had enough of us working on it. Can it be done, says Cyclops? It must be done, Jean thinks. Magic sends a message that, then I guess, Captain, it's in your hands now. There's no place I'd rather leave it. What else do we need? Jean says, can you keep an eye on Nathan? Happy to, says Magic. Then out loud, Cyclops says, if you need us, just call. We'll be listening for you. I wish you luck, son, but you don't need it. Thanks. Uh, why is everyone smiling, says Cable? Just because we're going to be okay, says Cyclops. That is five out of ten sword bearers rearing and ready to go. Thank you guys for your continued support. And what do you think about this issue? It was very horror-esque and I do like horror. So I was definitely feeling it. It felt a little short, a little rushed maybe. Yeah, pretty interesting, the Viscora. I don't know a lot about them. They apparently are something new and not good. So hopefully they can get that gate under control and dang, that was messed up. Old dude just had to suck himself out of the airlock. So he just waited for somebody to come and save him to suck himself out of the airlock, which is kind of wild. Odds of Cable being victorious in his tournament. I will say I'm gonna give him a one in, one in five. I want to go one and three, but if he was the older version of Cable, I would have went one and three, but the younger version of Cable seems kind of green to me. He has some skills, don't, yeah, no doubt, but I like my Cable grumpy and disgruntled and, you know, looking for his Metamucil, so I don't know about this young Cable, but we will see how he fares in the future. Make sure you have subscribed so you can get all the videos as I'm releasing them. Thank you again. See you next time.